Paper Mario 64 is my favorite game of all time. And Paper Mario Origami King was the very first game I have ever pre-ordered. And I replayed Paper Mario Thousand Year Door just before Origami King came out. And here's my review. Hello everyone, how's it going? If you are new to my channel, I uh, make gaming related content and I stream video games regularly on my Twitch channel. So uh, join me over there. I finally got a haircut today, you guys, after like, nine months. So my hair is looking uh, particularly glamorous today. Enjoy it while it lasts uh, because it probably will not look this nice uh, for a very long time because I cannot be bothered to style my own hair. <laughs> I've done some brief video game reviews in the past, but this is going to be my very first in-depth video game review. So I'm gonna be breaking down this review into five categories. Gameplay, writing and character, graphics and style, sound design, and additional thoughts. So we're gonna start out with gameplay and, um, well. I mean, I could go on and on about how I feel like the standard battles are really tedious and pointless, and I legit stopped caring about regular battles about halfway through the game, but uh, let's be real. If you're here, you've already heard all of that from pretty much every other review channel ever, and it's definitely the game's greatest weakness. If you somehow don't know what the battle system is in this game, it's basically a ring where you need to shift enemies around into the perfect positions in order for you to strike them. I mean, it's cool at first, but after the first few battles, it's just, it's just not fun. I kind of wonder if it's because it's just so time consuming. It, it's time consuming. It costs way too much brain power to complete every single battle but for like no benefit. There's no leveling system. So there's no reason to battle except for coins and confetti. But the thing is you can get coins and confetti all over the place. Like there's just so, there are ample coins and confetti in the game. And battles don't even give you all that much in coins and confetti. So so there, there's no, there's no reason to battle. And the thing is, I love puzzles, okay? I love little brain games and stuff like that, but even I got burnt out about halfway through the game. Boss battles, however, are a lot more fun. I found myself really liking the boss battles. Not only does the gameplay switch it up by having you be on the outside and having to path your way to the boss, the different panels and the different boss abilities provided a challenge and a sense of progression that is just non-existent in regular battles. Boss battles are also pretty time consuming, but I found myself really enjoying them. I really like the confetti system, personally. Um, I don't know, I just like the idea of fixing the world by throwing confetti at it. I don't know, I don't know, I thought it was fun. And the toad finding is, is actually really great. Each little toad, it says a little quip when you rescue it, and it's really satisfying to see them fill out your audience as you progress through the game. And it's one of those like collectible type of things too. Speaking of collectibles, uh, the actual collectible trophies in the game. I found myself not really caring about them just because the game already has an inherent collecting system through the toads. So I felt like they have like two collected collecting systems in the game. I don't know, I, I thought it was just kind of extra. I will say that there are several sequences in the game that are very Mario Party. Like there's a literal game show section of the game that it's it's just you playing Mario Party type mini games. And I mean, I love Mario Party. So I love these sections. And events and mini games like these are sprinkled out throughout the game. So I really appreciated it because um, the game could have easily of turned these into more battles, but the game very mercifully turned these into mini games and in, instead of the ring battle thing. So I, I found myself really enjoying those. The rest of the game is you running around and exploring the different lands, uh, which have some platforming and puzzle elements to it, which is standard for Paper Mario. So, you know, it, it was decent. Okay, so the writing in this game is a real mixed bag. Um, overall, it's positive. The overarching story, I mean, it's a Mario game. <laughs> Take an educated guess as to what you think Mario needs to do in this game. Oh, would you look at that? Peach and her castle get kidnapped once again. 
Wow, who could have seen that coming? This time, the origami king, King Ollie, uh, he kidnaps Peach's castle and throws a bunch of streamers all over the land and Mario has to rescue Princess Peach by cutting all of these streamers that are that have taken the castle and then he travels to the castle to rescue Princess Peach. That's, that's the overarching story, okay? Actually, let's talk about Peach for a second. I really miss the Peach episodes because this game has none. In the first Paper Mario and in Thousand Year Door, Peach had her own little adventures where you got to play as her and accomplish certain tasks to help Mario throughout his journey. And in Super Paper Mario, you actually got to play as her throughout the game. But in this game, she's a wall decoration. <laughs> I, like she she legit does nothing like girl like I I think that's a new low for you and I don't know this is a particular nitpick for me just because I really enjoy when there are female characters that are um competent speaking of competent females oh boy so Mario's main partner in this game is Olivia people seem to like Olivia okay but for me Oh, she was just so grating. Like she's just, she's just so, she's just so cute and quirky. <laughs> like she's just so smart. <laughs> and by smart, I mean, she's dumber than a bag of rocks. And sometimes her eyes, they, they just refuse to see things. And I, it just, oh my gosh. I was hoping the game would give some sort of explanation as to why she is just so lacking in knowledge. I legit thought the game would give Olivia some sad backstory about how she was never let outside and she knows nothing about the world because, because of it. And uh, no, nope, nope. Uh, the game never answers as to why um, Olivia is the way she is. She's dumb because she's dumb. It, that's it. That is her main personality trait. And uh, wow, is it annoying. Even when she, spoilers, dies. I thought what she did was like nice and all, but I didn't really feel much for her. I felt way more for Bobby and we only spend like a fourth of the game with him. However, if you overlook Olivia, okay, the writing in this game overall is actually really good. Like, like really good, okay? I know I spent the last few minutes ranting on Olivia, but really overall the writing in this game is one of the strong points of the game. This game just has such a charming personality that really reminded me of the original Paper Mario at points. There are sequences in this game that really make you feel like Nintendo had a lot of fun creating this part. I feel like the game had to overcompensate in the quality of the writing because they didn't have the creative freedom to make new character designs. They really didn't win me over with Olivia, but I learned to tolerate her after a while because the writing everywhere else was just so good. Bobby, of course, is probably the most memorable sidekick in the game. And I really applaud Nintendo for including some really sad and potentially disturbing stuff in the game. Like there were several times in the game where I was thinking, man, if this was a different game, this would be some real horror fuel. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Whenever this game has a, dare I say, cute and quirky sequence, like the hidden cafes, the Shogun Studio Theater and other cute moments, they just, they just really worked for me. And don't get me started on the writing on some of these villains, okay? Some of their personalities are just so over the top and I love it. Despite this game having a very simple premise and despite Olivia, the writing and fun sequences in this game really show this game's personality. And I, I actually really love, I really love it. The graphics and the style. Okay, so the visuals in this game are amazing. The designs of the origami characters and the colors of everything just look so good. And each and every different area in the game is just so unique and fun and beautiful to look at. I love that we basically went to Shogun Disneyland as an area. Um, and I love that we got to visit Wind Waker. I love that we got to visit Paper Mario Las Vegas. All of these places are just so fun and visually stunning. 
Again, this game had to overcompensate for the lack of original character designs. So they just went all out on the locations in the different areas and the style of this game. Sound design, the music in this game is great. I love that the battle music changes when you enter a new area of the world. It's a nice little touch that made battles slightly more bearable. And there are even little songs throughout the game that are just so cute. And there are parts of the game where the sound design adds more charm to, you know, the fun and quirky sequences. <laughs> what just happened? What just happened? Is this a musical? Is this game a musical? I'm down for it if it is. <laughs> what? What just happened? Oh, that high note though. Ooh. The sound design of this game is really great and I don't really have anything to criticize. Additional thoughts. Okay, so I think it's really sad that Nintendo revealed that they can't make original character designs anymore because I really loved the original partners. And the Paper Mario series has some amazing villains. Lady Bo, Vivian, Admiral Bobbery, Jimothy, the baby Yoshi, the Shadow Queen. They, oh, they were just such incredible characters. It's kind of sad that we won't have characters like them again. And I also think that if this game had the thousand year door battle system or something like it, I think this would have been a fantastic game. I, I, I think this had the potential to be a great game if it had a good battle system. So now that I've gone through all of my main points, uh, here is my grading system. Now, if you will see here, um, I got myself a tier list. So basically I've ranked everything from one to 10 and I will be going over what each ranking means. 10, obviously iconic, buy this game right now. This game, if it makes it to 10, it means it is an icon of that platform. It is one of the best games of that entire game's generation. And in, it's a staple, you have to have it. Nine, it's a fantastic game. I really loved it and you probably should go buy it. Eight. It's a great game, um, but I I would buy it if you're interested in the game. If it's if, if this type of game doesn't float your boat, then don't worry about it. But if you're even a little bit interested, I would probably go get it. Seven, this is a good game. Um, if it is convenient for you to buy it, if you have a little extra money, you can afford to buy yourself a new game, or if someone gives you a gift card or something along those lines, if it's convenient for you to go get this game, I would go get this game. But otherwise, don't don't feel like you need this game. Six, this is an okay game. Um, I would not buy this game on full price. I would wait for it to go on sale. And once it's on sale, then go ahead and get it. But otherwise, it's not something that you need right now. Five, this is a subpar game. Um, and I would play this game if it's given to you or if you can find it for free, or if you find if you find it for like 90% off or something like that, then, then you can get this game. But otherwise, this is, it's not that great. It's not horrible, but it's not good either. If it lands in four, it is a bad game, but it could be worse. You know, th there might be some good elements of the game, but overall, this is a bad game. Three, is, is pretty much like four, but even worse. Like this is just really bad and there are no real redeeming qualities to this game. Two is not only is this game bad, it was painful to play. I can't even think of a game that deserves a one, but this game is like, oh my gosh, why was this game made? This is actual torture. Ugh, this is an awful game. This is the kind of game you give to people if you want to see them suffer. So now that I've gone through my uh, tier list, let's place Paper Mario Origami King. Considering everything that I have just explained, personally, I will rank Paper Mario Origami King in the seven category. Origami King does have some major flaws, but there are also some really good parts of the game that I really, really enjoyed. I'm really glad I played it once. Um, not gonna lie, I probably won't play it a second time unless 
another Paper Mario game comes out in the future and I'm doing like a hype train or something like that. It's definitely not one of those games that you'll be playing multiple times or, or there's like some any real replay value or anything like that. But when it has some really cute, charming moments, oh, those moments are just, it, it, it's worth it. it. It really is nice. So there you go, seven out of 10. Buy this game if it is convenient for you to buy it. If it's not convenient for you to buy it, or if you know, you're know you not all that interested in the game, it, it's okay to give this one a skip. Thank you so much for watching my video. If you liked it, then go ahead and like and comment and subscribe and blah, blah, blah. I, I'm contractually obligated to tell you these things since I am a YouTuber and you've heard every single YouTuber say like, comment, subscribe. So, so if you want to tell the YouTube algorithm, hey, hey, I like this video and I want other people to see this video too. Then YouTube will see your like and be like, oh my goodness, this person liked the video. Maybe somebody else might like this video too. And then other people will see the video too and they will like the video as well, okay? If if you if, if you could do that, I mean, that, that'd be nice. I mean, you don't have to, I mean, you know, it's, your, it's your life. I can't tell you what to do. I would really appreciate it though. I, okay. Thanks. Anyway, thank you so much for watching and I will see you guys next time. Bye.